Vehicles are powerful, some even more so than others. And what makes them so powerful? It's the engines. And some engines are totally bananas. These are the most powerful vehicles with crazy engines. Number 20. Fire Force 3 Jet Car the first jet funny car, the Fire Force JFC-1, lit up the UK and Europe with the shock of salooned body jet-powered automobiles. It made its debut at York Raceway in 1989 as Europe's first competitive jet funny car. The vehicle was an instant hit, and Santa Pod Raceway welcomed it to compete. Since its initial appearance on the track, the JFC-1 has maintained its distinctive look and paint scheme. It featured the square-bodied race form of the time with a short back deck and no aerofoil portion. Number one established several speed and elapsed time records, some of which are still unmatched even to this day. The automobile had been featured in far too many magazines to name and had been utilized in the opening sequences of numerous television shows, including a well-known appearance on the BBC's Top Gear. But it doesn't stop there. There's one more member of the Fire Force family who's even more awesome. And while it may be a funny car, no one's laughing when its gigantic engine fires up. Santa Pod Raceway needed a branded car to compete at the circuit, thus it would be given the Santa Pod Raceway livery. Number 3 made his debut at Santa Pod Raceway's Flame and Thunder in 2004, and has since appeared at several events. It's the most photographed Fire Force car, and it's still making people stop in their tracks to stare. Well, maybe just to even weep with joy. As the jet car speeds down the strip, the extreme heat generated by the jet engine combined with the sound of the car silences its spectators. The jet engine in this mechanical Frankenstein of a machine produces thrust equivalent to more than 10,000 horsepower, and it can smash the quarter mile in less than five seconds at a top speed of almost 300 miles per hour. Martin Hill pushed the car to its limits and clocked a terminal speed of 336 miles per hour in 5.793 seconds during the Easter Thunderball event in 2005, breaking the Guinness record. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Jet Go-Kart Tom Bagnall, an engineering enthusiast, has set a new world record with his jet-powered go-kart, which reached an astounding 112.29 miles per hour. The 26-year-old from Cheadle, UK, spent a year assisting fellow engineer Andy Morris, who invented the system, in putting it together before earning a spot in the current Guinness World Records book. A go-kart with a homemade jet engine in the back and a gas tank by the driver's feet propelled Tom into the legendary book. The record was set at RAF Elvington in Yorkshire in front of Guinness adjudicators Mark McKinley and Matilda Hanye, who used a speed trap to confirm the achievement. Is this the go-kart that even Lewis Hamilton would go crazy for? You better believe it is. Is it faster than an F1 car, though? Not quite. But it's still pretty awesome all the same. Would you be brave enough to race this around the streets of your hometown? Let us know in the comments below! Tom acknowledges that getting into the high-speed cart is a nerve-wracking ordeal, saying that every time he steps into it, he's always slightly nervous because he gets naturally scared of the jet engine because it just doesn't seem all that quite right. Number 18. Shockwave Jet Truck how about putting a jet engine on something a little bigger? Like a huge truck with a crazy fire livery to show off just how fast you really are. This thing is literally fire, and it's known as the Shockwave Jet Truck. 
Shockwave, a Peterbilt semi, and Super Shockwave, a 1957 Chevy truck, are part of a line of these jet-powered American vehicles. The first of the Shockwave trucks is simply Shockwave. At 376 miles per hour, it presently holds the world record for jet-powered full-size trucks. The truck is powered by three Westinghouse J3448 jet engines that provide 36,000 horsepower and allow it to run the quarter mile in just 6.63 seconds. Wouldn't that just make a run to the grocery store go just a little bit faster? Shockwave is now being driven by Chris Darnell, who uses the truck to battle against planes that travel 300 miles per hour in a rolling drag race at air shows, which he also frequently wins. That's right, this is a semi that's capable of defeating a plane. It uses 400 liters of fuel for every mile, and considerably more when the afterburners are kicked on. Two airplane parachutes are required to slow the truck down at the end of a race, so don't hold your breath for a Tesla version anytime soon. The latest truck is Super Shockwave. It features two Westinghouse J3448 jet engines to power it, and the truck is based on a Chevy cab from a 1957 Chevy. The vehicle features a top speed of 336 miles per hour recorded over a mile. That's one crazy truck. Number 17 the Peterbilt 587. The Peterbilt Motors Company is a vehicle manufacturer that's based in the United States. It specializes on commercial heavy-duty and medium-duty vehicles, having produced its first truck in 1939. Peterbilt would be founded in Oakland, California, but is now based in Denton, Texas. These all-American vehicles are produced in Quebec, Canada, and here's how it all began. Logs for the lumber business were floated downriver in the first third of the 20th century, carried by steam tractors or horse teams, and T.A. Peterman, a plywood maker and lumberman in Tacoma, Washington, couldn't transport his felled inventory to his lumber mill fast or effectively enough. So he began to look into logging trucks, which were still in their infancy at the time. Fast forward to today, and you can now buy the ultimate logging truck, the Peterbilt 587. The 587 is an aerodynamic model that replaced the previous 387 and comes with a number of improvements that make it one of the most fuel-efficient trucks on the road. The truck is available in single or sleeper cab variants with axle ratings of up to 46,000 pounds. It's designed specifically for highway usage. The 587 received the Environmental Protection Agency's Smartway certification in 2010, indicating that it's both fuel efficient and ecologically friendly. The truck is powered by either a Picard MX engine rated at 380 to 485 horsepower or a Cummins ISX-15 engine rated for 4 to 600 horsepower. That's a whole lot of horses. Number 16. Jet-powered Ferrari Let's begin by throwing the regular engine to the curb and putting something much more insane under the hood. Ryan Lightning McQueen, whose moniker is arguably the most apt for someone of his breed, accomplished just that when he invested over $100,000 and over a decade creating a functional jet-powered Ferrari Enzo-looking monstrosity. Over the years it took McQueen to create the automobile, which is fittingly titled Insanity, he claimed Google and YouTube would be his best friends for research. He's currently the happy owner and creator of a jet-powered behemoth with two Rolls-Royce Viper engines producing over 18,000 horsepower. The engines were developed in the 1950s and employed on a variety of test planes for the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom and the United States Air Force, according to McQueen. The dual Vipers produce roughly 14,000 pounds of thrust at full throttle. McQueen meticulously measured and cut the body from a miniature radio-controlled Ferrari Enzo and then took them to an overhead projector and ten-folded the pieces. The bigger template pieces were then utilized 
utilized to create plywood panels, which were filled with styrofoam before the chassis was fitted. According to McQueen's estimates, once the car's fully tuned in, it should be able to reach a peak speed of nearly 400 miles per hour. Number 15. Plymouth Air Radial Truck the Corns family's fascination with aviation has quite a background. Adam, the younger of the Corns, was infatuated with flying when he was around 13 years old. His parents, Gary and Alice, would surprise him with a flight in a stunt plane for his birthday. Oh, how sweet! However, everything went disastrously wrong when the plane collided with some electrical wires and crashed next to Adam's horrified parents. Amazingly though, Adam was unharmed and the pilot merely had a black eye, which Adam joked was due to his mother hitting him. As a result, he shifted his focus to hot-rotting half-plane half-cars. The Plymouth began as a simple old vehicle that Gary purchased for a few hundred dollars from a client and then left to sit for over 30 30 years. He wasn't really sure what he wanted to do with it, but he knew that it would come to him eventually. When it did, it was something absolutely crazy. The original structure would be replaced with a new tube chassis that expanded the truck's front end to accommodate the seven-cylinder Jacobs radial engine. That's right, he put an airplane jet engine into his old Plymouth. Getting the power back to the turbo 400 automatic gearbox and narrower Franklin quick change rear end took some ingenuity, with the most of the components either scavenged from the yard or hand-built within the shop. The 757 cubic inch 300 horsepower radial engine is belt driven and linked to a TH400 automatic transmission. And this monster does truly fly. Figuratively speaking, of course, it's just fast. Number 14. Dabiyan. In the United Arab Emirates, an Emirati sheik created an amazing 10-wheeled vehicle using a military truck and a jeep. Sheik Hamad bin Hamdan al Nayan and Abu Dhabi residents posted photos of the giant SUV on his Instagram page. The engine, nicknamed Dabiyan, is a cross between an Oshkosh M1075 military vehicle and a Jeep Wrangler. One image of the monstrous vehicle compares it to a conventional automobile on the highway, emphasizing its huge size. Just take a look at the huge difference. The vehicle's 35 feet long, 8 feet wide, and 10 feet tall, and weighs a whopping 24 tons. The Sheik would describe the vehicle as the world's biggest SUV. It has a massive Caterpillar 15.2 liter six cylinder 600 horsepower engine, which originally powered the military vehicle that it was based on. The SUV is thought to be housed in the Emirates National Auto Museum, despite the Instagram pictures that are showing it on the road. The amazing car is just one of several high end vehicles featured on the Sheik's Instagram account, which is to be expected when you're a member of the ruling family of the entire country. Number 13. The Balaz 75710 Someone in Belarus decided not long ago to create a vehicle with the largest conceivable load capacity, which seemed audacious, ambitious, even a little crazy. It was so enormous that it appeared to defy human comprehension. The world's largest and wildest Belarusian truck. And so the Belaz 75710 was conceived. The vehicle was monstrous from the beginning. The ultra class haul truck is 67.5 feet long, 26.7 feet high, and 32.3 feet wide. The wheels are massive. Each of the eight Michelin tubeless pneumatic tires can handle weights of up to 200,000 pounds. After some technological issues were resolved, the next stage was then to decide on the general design of the truck. as it was not intended to be a show vehicle, but rather a fully functional manufacturing machine that would be reasonably straightforward to maintain and build. Every feature of this beast shouted in blazing lights that it's super giant, and it must be handled as such. It would be created with a capacity of 900,000 pounds and released in 2014. Oh, and if you'd like to purchase one, it's only a measly $6 million. 
Number 12. Kawasaki Ninja H2R Now just imagine going insanely fast on only two wheels. That's kind of scary, isn't it? The Kawasaki Ninja H2 is a Kawasaki Heavy Industries supercharged super sport class motorbike in the Ninja Sport Bike series with a variable speed centrifugal type supercharger, which means that you can do just that. The Ninja H2R is the track only model and it's the quickest and most powerful production motorbike on the market with a maximum output of 310 horsepower. The H2R boasts 50% more power than the quickest street legal bikes, whereas the street legal Ninja H2 only has 200 horsepower. In June of 2015, TT Racing participant James Hillier drove a Kawasaki H2R over the 373 mile road course as an inter race demonstration lap at near race speeds using standard superbike slick race tires, setting a Rhodes TT record for the fastest fastest peak speed achieved by a motorbike in the Isle of Man. What a total maniac! Hillier's own Strava GPS smartphone software for cyclists reported a peak speed of almost 206 miles per hour over the Solby Strait. In 2017, Kawasaki released a limited edition model, the Ninja H2 Carbon, which was uniquely numbered and had a distinctive paint and carbon fiber top cowl. Shigeru Yamashita established a 202.743 mile per hour speed record in the Southern California Timing Association on August 12th of 2018 with an unofficial squad of Kawasaki workers known as Team 38. On August 15th, he set a new speed of 209.442 miles per hour, breaking his own record. This is officially the world's quickest two-wheeled vehicle. Number 11. Problem Child Donald Campbell was a British speed world record holder who holds the distinction of being the only person to set both the world water and land speed records in the same year of 1964. However, his life was cruelly cut short three years later while attempting to achieve a new personal best in his Bluebird K7 jet powered boat. However, another boat is now prepared to take on the challenge. It's dubbed Problem Child, and it uses top fuel dragster technology to attain the same speeds in only a few seconds. Ripples in the water are generated by the wind, tree branches, and crosswinds. It's like smashing into concrete when you hit a wave at over 200 miles per hour, which is why hydroplane collisions frequently disintegrate into nothing. For anyone who's unfamiliar with these water drag racers, these amazing machines have the same 8,000 horsepower supercharged nitro burning 500 cubic inch Hemi engines as a top fuel dragster or funny car. In fact, the Problem Child Squad has a tight relationship with the Kalita Motorsports NHRA team which pays off with the strong parts and technology overlap. The Problem Child boat, owned by Fast Eddie Knox, is the incumbent Lucas Oil Drag Boat Series Top Fuel World Champion and has the 15 fastest 1,000 foot elapsed times in history, including the current national records. However, the boat has been faster in the past, reaching speeds of nearly 260 miles per hour last season. And all of that was done on water. Number 10. The Bluebird K7 Now we get to talk about the Bluebird a little more because this was one of the craziest engines of all time. The K7 was the first successful jet-powered hydroplane and when it first launched in January of 1955 would be deemed revolutionary. Campbell and K7 were responsible for increasing the water speed record by over 100 miles per hour from 178 miles per hour to a little over 276 miles per hour. Following the death of his father, Sir Malcolm Campbell, Donald Campbell began his record breaking career in 1949. Initially, he would attempt to pilot his father's 1939 built Rolls Royce R type powered propeller driven hydroplane Bluebird K4, but he was unsuccessful and had a series of disappointing failures. 
Following the death of rival record holder John Cobb in his jet boat Crusader, which broke apart at speeds of nearly 200 miles per hour, Campbell began work on his own sophisticated all-metal jet-powered Bluebird K7 hydroplane to challenge the record. Between July of 1955 and December of 1964, Campbell broke seven world records in the K7. He then decided to go for another water speed record with the K7 in June of 1966, this time aiming for 300 miles per hour. The K7 would be traveling at almost 320 miles per hour as it crossed the start of the measured kilometer. However, when it approached a speed that it had never experienced before, the stability began to deteriorate, and the front end of the boat began to jump out of the water on the starboard side. It then cartwheeled across the water before coming to a halt after somersaulting and plunging back into the lake front end first. Campbell was instantaneously killed. His teddy bear mascot, Mr. Whoppet, would be discovered amidst the floating debris and his helmet would be retrieved. The wreck of the K-7 7 was discovered by the Royal Navy divers, but the hunt for Campbell's body would be called off after two weeks. Number 9. The Lark LX With a budget in the trillions, the U.S. Army can afford to pretty much burn money on any crazy project that it feels like. And that often means that it comes up with some truly amazing vehicles that would look just as good on the track as they do on the battlefield. But what about getting your gear from the boat to where the fighting's going on? You'll need a landing craft, and the best one out there was once the Lark LX. It was in service from 1952 to 2001 and could transport up to 200 people or 100 tons of goods. The vehicle was powered by four GMC diesel engines with a combined output of 265 horsepower, each driving one wheel on land. Each of the two 47-inch diameter propellers that drove the vehicle in the water was driven by a pair of engines. It could go up to 20 miles per hour on land and 7.5 miles in the water. The first Bark set sail from Fort Lawton, Washington in 1952. Then in 1960, the designation would be changed from Bark to Lark. The Larks were initially sent to South Vietnam in 67 to support the 101st Airborne Division, and then again in 68 to support the 1st Cavalry Division. The Lark LX was the largest wheeled amphibious vehicle ever built, and it was developed by R.G. Laterne, the same crazy visionary behind the United States military's huge off-road land trains. If you watch closely, you'll observe a soldier sprinting up to one of the Lark over 8 foot tall LX's wheels and just tightening one of its nuts. It all makes me curious about what the procedure is for replacing a flat tire on one of these monsters. Number 8. The Mill Me 26. How about the other team though? What kind of brutal engine power is going down in the Russian military? Well, how about the Mil Mi-26? This is a heavy transport helicopter from the Soviet Union. It's the largest and most powerful helicopter to have gone into serial production and is operated by both military and civilian operators. The Mi-26 was planned to replace the older Mi-6 and Mi-12 heavy lift helicopters as a heavy lift helicopter for military and civil usage with twice the cabin room and payload of the Mi-6, which was at the time the world's largest and fastest production helicopter. The 26's principal mission was to deliver military equipment to isolated places, which included 29,000 pound amphibious armored personnel vehicles and mobile ballistic missiles. The first 26 took to the air in December of 1977, and the first production plane would be delivered in October of 1980. During its service life, it's seen some kind of weird things. The 26S was a disaster response variant hurriedly created after the Chernobyl nuclear catastrophe containment operations in 1986. For radiation tests and precise drops of insulating material to cover the damaged number 4 reactor, 30 Mi-26 aircraft were employed. And even more crazily, the 26 would be used to carry a 25-ton block of frozen earth encasing a 23,000-year-old woolly mammoth 
from the Siberian tundra to a lab in October of 1999. Number 7. Jet-Powered School Bus an Indiana car enthusiast with a taste for speed has given school children, who were always late, a great way to sleep in longer. He created a 367 mile per hour jet powered school bus. That'll get you to class before the bell. Paul Stender and his construction team, Indie Boys, constructed the stunning yellow bus named School Time before taking it out for a test run. Onlookers who were lucky enough to catch a glimpse of the bus and its GE J79 jet engine in action were met by 80 foot flames shooting out the back from the afterburner. In a single run, the gas tank may use up to 150 gallons of fuel, so I guess it won't be getting a green paint job. Stender adds that his motivation for creating such a terrifying and awe-inspiring ride was to steer children away from drugs. That's right kids, stay away from drugs and get into jet-powered school buses instead. Only the massive engine leaves room for just three passengers, so you better start lining up now. Number 6. The Beast of Turin Despite being a car, the Beast of Turin is actually faster than an aeroplane. That's right, and what makes this even crazier is that said car isn't a modern invention. It was built in 1910. This 1907-08 Fiat chassis would be fitted with quite the engine, a 28.4-liter six-cylinder engine to be precise. That's some serious business. That made this thing capable of 300 horsepower. You're basically talking Barry Allen speed. That may seem fast now, but to give context, back then the average car engine peaked at around 100 miles per hour. This thing had serious speed. When running the car, it would spit fire because of how fast it was going, and I don't mean that it was good at rapping. Technically the world's fastest car, it was sadly unable to complete the return run within the 60 minutes required for certification due to technical problems. The machine was sadly dismantled sometime after the First World War, and the Beast of Turin was no more. Number 5. Brutus IndyCar and Grand Prix racing before World War II was a sport for suicidal maniacs. Super light bathtubs with massive engines and zero safety equipment meant that there were deaths at almost every race meeting. But thankfully, things are a little different these days. Unless you're driving Brutus, that is. In which case, things are even more insane. That's because Germany wasn't really authorized to have any warplanes after the First World War and numerous aircraft engines were accessible. This was just what British motorsports enthusiasts wanted to hear. The Brutus experimental vehicle is built on a chassis with a 1907 chain drive and a 12-cylinder BMW aircraft engine with a cylinder size of almost 47 liters that would be salvaged from the First World War. The original three-gear gearing mechanism and a chain gearbox on the rear axle provide the engine output. Only the back axle is slowed by the brakes. There's no bulkhead in the vehicle. The driver sits immediately behind the engine, which has just a grid separating the moving elements from the driver's compartment. As a result, he's more or less immediately exposed to the motor's waste heat, along with any leakage without any protection. If it isn't obvious, that all adds up to Brutus being a complete death machine. The vehicle's fun comes from its ability to reach speeds that exceed 200 kilometers per hour while maintaining low spin counts. Roger Collings of Wales raced at 200 kilometers per hour on the Bosch test track at Boxburg's High Speed Oval, which features two Two steeply banked barriers, and no one else has attempted this but Roger, who is clearly a balls of steel kind of guy. Number 4. Bluebird now, I told you earlier about Donald Campbell's water speed record, but how about this land speed record machine? Well, that was the Bluebird Proteus CN7. 
The CN7 was built by Motor Panels in Coventry, England, under the supervision of Donald Stevens of Norris Brothers and Maurice Britton of Motor Panels, with Ken and Lou Norris serving as co-chief designers and was finished in the spring of 1960. In honor of the partnership, CN stands for Campbell Norris. The Bluebird CN7 would be the first vehicle to set a land speed record with a gas turbine engine. The automobile weighs four tons, having a completely independent double wishbone suspension and an innovative aluminum honeycomb sandwich body with tremendous strength. The CN7 was sent to the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah after some low speed tests at Goodwood in England. It, however, was seriously damaged in a high speed accident, with Campbell suffering a lower skull fracture, a fractured eardrum, and scrapes and bruises. He would then stay in California to recover until November of 1960. His self assurance had been seriously rattled and he was experiencing moderate panic attacks, but then gritted his teeth and rebuilt the C7 and then put it back into action. On its next try, it averaged 429 miles per hour for the final part of the measured mile peaking at almost 440 miles per hour when it exited the track. Campbell drove the C7 through the streets of Adelaide, South Australia's capital, to a presentation at City Hall in front of a throng of almost 200,000 people, all in order to commemorate the triumph. Number 3. Thrust SSC the spiritual successor to the Bluebird was the Thrust SSC, another car built by British people who seem to have no fear of death. The Thrust SSC holds the global land speed record which would be set on October 15th of 1997, when Andy Green drove it to a speed of 763 miles per hour, breaking the sound barrier for the first time. Two after-burning Rolls-Royce Spey turbofan engines similar to those that were employed in the UK version of the F4 Phantom II jet fighter powered it. The historic run in October of 1997 was anticipated by intensive vehicle testing in Jordan's Al Jafar Desert in the fall of 96 and the spring of 97. The car is 54 feet long and 12 feet wide, weighing over 10 tons, and is on exhibit at the Coventry Transport Museum in Coventry, England. Visitors to the museum may ride a 4D motion simulator that shows a computer-generated animation of Green's world record-breaking run. Number 2. Bloodhound LSR The Bloodhound LSR, originally known as the Bloodhound SSC, is yet another British land vehicle designed to travel at supersonic speeds, all in the hopes of breaking the world land speed record. The aero-shaped automobile has been in development since 2008 and will be propelled by a jet engine as well as a rocket engine. Andy Green, who we just spoke about, will seek to break his own record, which was set in the Thrust SSC. The vehicle is said to be capable of speeds of up to 1,000 miles per hour. Testing began in 2019 once a new investor would be secured, but unfortunately due to a lack of funding, the extra rocket couldn't be installed until 2020. It would be announced in January of 2021 that the vehicle was for sale and the crew had moved on to other projects. Number 1. The MTT Y2K Turbine Motorcycle the MTT Y2K Turbine Motorcycle, also known as the Y2K Turbine Superbike, is an American motorcycle that was built by Marine Turbine Technologies and have been produced since the year 2000. The motorcycles are not mass-produced in a continuous run, but instead each one is handcrafted to order after the buyer's preferences are received. It's the most costly production motorbike according to Guinness World Records. The Y2K's engine powers the back wheel via a two-speed gearbox and chain and sprocket, unlike certain turbojet-powered bikes that rely on jet propulsion for thrust. It's propelled by a 320 
220 horsepower Rolls-Royce Allison Model 250C18 gas turbine because a turbine engine can run on a variety of fuels and the MTT Turbine Superbike, like other turbine engines, doesn't require jet fuel to function because it doesn't have to withstand the high temperatures that jet fuel is designed to withstand without coagulating or waxing. The Turbine Superbike was voted fourth best motorbike on the Discovery Channel TV show Greatest Ever Motorcycles, with the Turbine Superbike holding the Guinness World Record for the world's fastest production motorcycle and being the most costly. As we've seen from this list, there are not only a crap load of creative ways to get around, but there are definitely some powerful ways to get around as well. Which of these crazy engines would you like to ride with? Let me know in the comments below. Also check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.